Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about level design. In this episode, we're going to see what procedural generation is and why it can be useful for game creation. In short, procedural generation is about using randomness to automate some parts of your process. But not just pure randomness, controlled randomness. More precisely, you'll want to define specific rules that constrain your generator to a subset of possibilities and enforces it only produces viable results. Now, what you call viable is up to you, and procedural generation can be applied to lots of areas of game creation. Asset creation, animations, enemy behavior simulation, power-ups or skills, terrains and levels, music, quests and storylines, character skins, etc. But the idea is always to abstract away the system you want to automate and then code up a machine capable of simulating this process to give you logical and usable results. This can be difficult because it means you have to have a really good grasp on this specific stage of the creation pipeline that you want to make procedural. And for intricate and large systems like a questline or an entire level, it requires a real knowledge of the matter at hand. But it's also an immensely helpful tool, and for many reasons. For example, if your team is limited in terms of resources or skills, for example, if you don't have any level designer in your little company but you have skilled coders, then using procedurally generated content can be interesting. Of course, you'll still need your programmers to be creative and open to level designing to a little extent, so that they can find the right rules and tune the machine properly but it will still reduce the amount of time required overall. Obviously, generating assets procedurally is an amazing time saver, but it's also valuable in terms of storage space, since rather than saving hundreds and hundreds of little variations of a texture, you can store a few lines of code and have those generate a unique texture each time at runtime. And it can even help with immersion, typically with music and sound, where an automated process could technically compute just the right orchestration layers needed for this specific level of tension and smooth out the transitions between different audio contexts. You'd have way more granularity than anything a human could make. From a player's standpoint, it's also a great way to increase replay value. Having infinitely new unique nemesis like in Shadow of Mordor, or always fresh dungeons like in The Binding of Isaac, is a good selling point because it tells the players that, once they're done with the main story, they'll still have a world to explore and play with. Basically, most roguelikes take advantage of this clever randomness to really push forward their die and retry central mechanic. Procedural generation can also be used to create larger games. Exploration-based games, or sandboxes, like No Man's Sky and Minecraft, use this tool to expand the world in the direction the player is going, and fake an endless universe. At a smaller scale, a basic endless runner is actually obligated to automate the obstacles operation, because you cannot have a human create an infinite amount of level space. All of this eventually boils down to an increase in gameplay variety, because players will be able to experience different locations, situations, events, skill sets, and all around adventures each time. The downside to all of these points is that, of course, procedurally generated levels may feel quite repetitive, if you don't have enough raw materials to have diverse enough combinations. Because you're computing lots of things while the game plays, it's also more demanding in terms of computing power. And you inherently let go of the level of control you could expect from manual creation, so you'll have less quality control and in the worst case scenario, non-viable results, such as unplayable levels. Basically, it's like any kind of creation. You have to understand the advantages but also the limitations of your tool to use it to its fullest potential while avoiding its pitfalls, and always consider whether it is adapted to the current project before committing to it. Finally, another essential point about procedural generation that is sometimes overlooked is that just like AI, its very in vogue cousin, it doesn't have to be used all on its own, from start to finish. It can actually be used to support a step of the game creation pipeline and not just try and replace it completely. For example, you could generate the terrain procedurally and then have the level designers use all their science and artistry to fill in the landmarks, the points of interest, the key events for the narrative and more. This is often called offline generation, 
because you run your generator beforehand and not while the game is running. And with all that said, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about level design and procedural creation and that you now have a better idea of why this tool can be useful. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for future level design tutorials. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.